Um, you've provided you've provided some some theories and reasons already why the offense is so good in the NBA right now, and the defenses are are struggling to catch up. Um, the pace, uh, skill level, of course, schedule changes. I actually wanted to provide just a little bit of perspective on this, actually, because my I'll go to my first year in the league. The number one offense was the Phoenix Suns at 112.9 points per 100 possessions. That'd be 16th this year. <laughs> uh, the 30th ranked defense, so the worst defense in the league was the Memphis Grizzlies. They would be 8th this year. Mm. Your first year in the league, the number one offense in the league was the Golden State Warriors, one of the yep. greatest teams ever, ever in NBA history. No doubt. They would only be 8th in offense yeah. this year. <laughs> and the 30th uh, defense in the league uh, that year, which that was... <clears throat> those Lakers teams that weren't very good, um, they would actually be 11th wow. in the league this year wow. defensively. And I, I would like to ask you, because you're in it. I, I'm yeah. two years out of it. Right. And I, I, so I, I watch games and I look at the numbers and yeah. I talk to people around the league. But from a player who is actively doing it, you're on the court. Yeah. Is it the spacing? Is it skill level? Is it the is it the rule changes, the referees? Like yeah. what is contributing to this? I think it's a little bit of everything, but I think what I've seen, especially like in the last three years, was that I think, and I'm gonna give ourselves a lot of credit here because I think we won a championship that was like outside of the natural flow of the NBA. You know, you got a disgruntled star that comes to a market that is not really uh in the NBA's plans of where they see things and we win a chip. You got Nick, who is probably the most unconventional coach that we have in the NBA. And I think that it opened people's eyes. It's such a copycat league that some of that creativeness got trickled down throughout the NBA. And I think that a lot of people are looking night to night and, and game to game. There's, there's a lot of adjustments. Whereas when I first came in seven years ago, it was like, we're a blue team. We're going to down you on the sides. We're going to play drop all year long. And then maybe we'll make adjustments in the playoffs. Whereas like you're seeing more adjustments and more creativity on a night to night basis than ever before. And I think the game is, if it's going up, if the game is going to continue to grow, you know, it's just natural that there's going to be more adjustments and more people trying to, find ways to be successful and, and you're seeing that like now the Mavericks have an adjustment for when you just want to double Luca the whole game you know they practice they've been practicing it for two or three years so they're gonna be better at it that's just one example yeah I, I think some of it too I, I think the analytics have played a role of course in the sense of the value of shots mm -hmm. historically the value of a corner three versus a contested mid-range mid -range shooter from a non-elite yep. mid-range guy like Kevin Durant right we can we can say all that and an offense can say all right we we want to play this way um but I I remember my first year in Philly that was the first time so this was like shit man my 12th year yeah was the first time where I'm on the bench and they're talking about lineup data mid game. Yeah. And they're going over that. Yeah. And like, so game to game, they're like, well, you had a three game stretch where you played seven minutes with Amir Johnson and you guys are a negative two <laughs> yeah. rating. So we're going to, we, we're not going to put you guys together. Yeah. And it's like that manipulation. And I mean that in a good way. I don't mean yeah. that in a negative way at all. Um, I, I think it's like teams are now optimizing the best lineups as much as they possibly can at yeah. all times. No, one one hundred percent, and we're in that era. You know, we're in the peak of the analytics era. Like, there's new stats and new things every day and um, every week. And like you said, it's it, all everybody has access to it. It's not like it used to be where there was an office where there was a couple of analytics guys in there doing all the numbers. It's like no, now you might have a coach who was came from that office that's on the bench that's got an iPad during the game or whatever the case may be. Like it's a big part of the league. And I think the game is is kind of adjusting to that. And the players have more access to it too. You know yeah. what I mean? Like when I first came in, it was the beginning of like don't take twos if you're a role player. Um and now you got to change your whole game based around that. So you got a whole league of guys that are used to that now. And right. The the le the the strategy and, and the analytics have sort of molded players into yeah. the optimal version of whatever analytics right. says. You gotta just yeah. keep adjusting and adapting. Yeah. I think 
the one thing the analytics is definitely doing is changing the numbers that we're seeing, which is, you know, like we talked about in the beginning, which is the high numbers and just the shooting percentages. It's the optimization. It's the optimization. Of, of I don't know sure. how much it, whether you like it or not, as far as like aesthetics yeah, from right. a hooping standpoint of like just good hoop and good basketball, but um, numbers for sure is changing it.